This is our September 2021 performance figures for our solar PV and Tesla Powerwall 2 here in the UK. Along with our Tesla Model 3, Hyundai Kona Electric usage, plus other things that have happened during the month. Hi, John here and welcome. September was a month of two halves for us, mainly because the second half of it we were on holiday in the Norfolk Broads on a cabin cruiser we hired. You'll certainly see the impact of not being at home on our stats when we get to them. I'm actually considering going away more often as it dramatically cuts the home energy usage. On Friday the 1st of October, which not strictly September but close enough, I picked up my stricken iMac from the Apple store in Milton Keynes. After much testing and diagnostic checks, they determined the issue was caused by a faulty memory stick. I always install third-party RAM in my Macs as Apple's memory is eye-wateringly expensive. So for example, 64 gigabytes of 26666 megahertz DDR4 memory is a thousand pounds from the Apple store which is actually slow um, memory in terms of RAM speed. And the same RAM from a reputable third party supplier like Kingston Memory, for example, is around half the price. Hence, I go with third party RAM. But yeah, that was a problem. I've never had a memory stick fail. And uh, yeah, that was the problem. So I've only got three sticks in there as opposed to four. But apart from that, it's all honky doring and no charge at all. So thank you very much, the Apple Store. Top work. Our Kafia MA120 electric smart meter had its firmware updated, pushed over the air sometime in late September. And the fix was successful as our half hourly figures are now filtering through to Octopus Energy. And the historical data from way back to July has started to port over from the smart meter. I'm now waiting for our bills to arrive to generate, to, so to, to be generated to cover the months from July through to September inclusive. I also ordered a replacement 8 meter charging cable, cable from MyEnergy for our Zappi version 1. The current cable has a, a sort of break um, in the wire along its length and it gives an intermittent fault. So sometimes the charging works fine, other times even though the car's plugged in you get the EV disconnected message on the screen of the Zappi. I worked out where the brake was through sort of trial and error of flexing and wiggling the cable, but decided a new cable was probably the safest option rather than shortening the current cable to remove the damaged section. The longer cable is useful as well as it means I don't have to do the sort of charging shuffle with the cars to ensure that I can get them all plugged in. The longer cable reaches both cars when they're parked where they are side by side. I'm guessing going forwards, I have to ensure they don't wrap the cable so tightly around the zappy and make it the larger loops to stop it from flexing so much when I put the, car, the charging cable away. Uh, I'll have an update on the Kona Electric 2. In my September stats video, I told you about the experience uh, during the service that um, I had and there was also a recall update that they installed at the same time but they couldn't tell me anything about it. There's a, a link up here if you want to know more about that, go and check that out. On the back of that experience I told you that I wrote and emailed Hyundai on the 17th of August and in the letter I requested they initiate a buyback for our car. No response to date from that letter. I'm going to write another letter to follow up that previous letter and send that off to them. However, um, I did get a response to my email of the 17th of August and they responded on the 28th of September. No apology for the length of time to respond, 41 days to respond to a simple question of can you please advise me when step two of the battery replacement will take place. The answer they've given in the email, I'll bring it up so you can have a look, um, is actually incorrect because uh, they state to book it in with your local dealer. Uh, but they also didn't actually answer my question, which was <laughs> what I was actually after in the first place. But I said it was incorrect, so why do I say it was incorrect, the information that they gave me? 
Well, at the same time, I had a letter um, around the end of September from Hyundai. It was actually dated the 27th of September. And within under the heading, what action should you take? It says in black and white, there's no need to make any bookings with your local dealer. Hyundai Motor UK will make contact with you and set up the booking when the vehicle BSA becomes available. It's the battery pack. Which is what I was previously led to believe. They also state in the letter that the battery will be changed anywhere between October 2021 and October 2022, citing battery worldwide battery shortages as a reason. So it could be actually 12 months before our car is put right. Until then, don't charge over 90%, 90%. Don't park in your garage. Park it away from your house and property. Oh, and there's £30 credit for your inconvenience, which I can't claim as I don't use their crappy app to charge our car with. As you can probably tell, I'm not best pleased with Hyundai. Do not buy Hyundai would be my advice. Cars might be great, but their customer service and support stinks. They have no empathy and no ethos about putting their customers first. Okay, brighter news. Let's move on to our sep September stats. As ever, I'll bring up the graphic on screen, which you can have a pause on the video if you want to review it in more detail. Alternatively, have a look down in the description down below. There's a complete list of all our components and the specifications of those components. Let's move to look at the solar PV generation numbers. So for September 2021, with our south-southwest facing 6.34 kilowatt array, we produced a total of 627 kilowatt hours on the two arrays combined. That's just seven kilowatts more than in August. And I've found that looking back historically that September and August can often be very similar in total generation figures. Our average daily solar generation was 20.9 for the month. And if we do these sums of our total generation figure for the period divided by the size of our solar array, so that's 627, divided by 6.4 kilowatts worth of panels, it comes out at 98 kilowatt hours per kilowatt panel. As ever, please drop your generation totals and your KWP performance in the comments down below, please. Um, as you all know, it provides a great comparison. Other, loads of other people read it and comment on it, and obviously I like to see them as well. So thank you in advance for that. If we look at the both arrays, our four, kilo, our four kilowatt array produced 394, and our newer 2.34 array produced 233. And you'll see it's very similar to um, September and August even. Moving on, we'll have a look at the overall self-power chart. Uh, so how we fared during the month for self-powered. As we were actually away for the last two weeks in September, I moved the power wall back into self-powered mode uh, so we didn't pull from the grid in the early hours of the morning. And we were self-powered from the power wall and solar contributions for 78% of the month. As you can see in the stack chart, 49% came from solar and 29% from the power wall. If you look at the 40% solar contribution in August, you might be forgiven in thinking that we had much more solar in September to reach the 49%. And I guess that can be the downside of looking at data and charts in isolation. As you know, if you recall, we produced only seven kilowatt hours more in a month from September to August, which certainly wouldn't equate to nearly 10% more self-powered from solar. So you have to consider other factors that impact solar contributions to self-power. So things like the amount of electricity the house used and at what point in the day it was used. Was the power used during a solar generation day or was it used once the solar day had finished? Like it gives you a, a much more rounded picture. This chart is our year on year. The chart compares the months of September from 2011 through to 2021. So it's 11 years worth of data. Values for 2020 onwards are for both arrays, whereas before then they were just the single four kilowatt array. The 627 
kilowatt is the is, you know, just a bit behind last year's total of 697. Um, so yeah, August year on year really told a similar story as well as September. So uh, much better then than just gone through. Oh yeah, power wall in and out chart. I did say last month I'd be waving goodbye to this chart as we're going to withdraw it. And the reason for that was the update to the Tesla app meant the data wasn't easily viewable anymore to me um, to find out the two, the Powerwall stats. In last month's um, video under the comments, um, Salakin stepped in and explained how to get that data. So thank you very much for that. Um, I'll bring up his comment now. I've since redesigned my spreadsheet to calculate that to the Powerwall data as it's now needed to do some simple maths and to, to, to work out that um, data from the, the figures supplied in the app. A little bit tedious, but can be done. So well done Tesla for breaking something that was okay with their new software update. I appear to be moaning a lot in this video, so <laughs> sorry about that. Um, yeah, so there's our uh, percentage, 84%. Um, I'll keep my eye on that because that seems a bit low to me, but I've double checked the figures. So as far as I'm concerned, it's correct. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll keep, keep my eye on that. Day by day chart. This gives you more detail of what happened during day by day in September. <laughs> Guess which day we left to go on holiday. And a hint is I charged the car in the early hours off peak before we left on that day. <laughs> the house usage shown in blue uh, on the 17th of September, the day of our holiday started. Basically, that's when we went. For the remainder of the month, the house usage was either charging the car via solar. I basically left the Tesla plugged in um, or we were heating the hot water via the eddy on the solar. So uh, lots at the beginning and then very little at the end. There's also, towards the end, lots of orange spikes um, as the excess solar went back to the grid. We had so two days of high grid pull shown in red. That was the 2nd and the 17th of September. And um, both those days we were charged the cars. Um, um, added together, that equated to uh, 92 kilowatts. If we scroll down, have a look at the four totals um, from those day by day. House usage gets shown in blue is 743.7 versus our solar of seven, sorry, 627. We'll come to the other two in a bit as we'll have a look at them in these charts coming up. So this is our average daily house usage and our average daily grid pool usage over the months. Not surprisingly, our average daily house usage was up at 31.1 .1, mainly because of the amount of uh, car charging we were doing. That's represented by the blue line. Our daily average pull from the grid was down at 9.5, which is the red line. So a look at what we sent back to the grid. We sent uh, 156 kilowatt hours of excess solar generation back to the grid. Um, the motto here is never go on holiday. This chart shows what we pulled from the grid and we consumed 285 kilowatt hours. Moving on to the eddy, thankfully I was able to grab the month end when we got back from holidays, first thing I did when we got in through the door on the, uh, the 30th. The eddy heats our hot water from surplus solar. This month it diverted 37 of solar generation to heat our hot water. Uh, for the year 326 and overall running total of 794. And then onto the cars with the Zappi. Uh, the Tesla Model 3 covered 456 miles during the month, bringing its total mileage to 14,612. No issues or problems with the car. We did one supercharging session and one public charging session where we added a total of 38.46 kilowatt hours, uh, all for no cost. We used the supercharger in Kings Lynn for the first time as well. So that's a, another one ticked off the list of superchargers we've been to. <laughs> it's a bit like bird spotting, isn't it? Uh, uh, do a, a chart of all the superchargers and tick them off if you've been to them. Oh, um, by the way, um, Tesla announced it 
globally ceased its referral program as of the 18th of September 2021 until further notice. There's no, there's now no free supercharging miles when you purchase a new Tesla using a referral code. Only solar installations have a referral code. So that's a little bit disappointing, but I guess in some respects it probably also tells you the success that Tesla are having in terms of sales. Home charging on the Tesla added 137.75 kilowatt hours and 38% of our total charge for the month came from sunshine uh, with 149.97 coming from the grid. Um, and this would have been at the 5.5 kilowatt hour rate on the Octopus uh, Go Faster tariff. So for August and September, when we moved to that tariff, um, I've actually updated the costs in the relevant cells on the spreadsheet to reflect that for both cars, which you can see there. The Tesla had four over-the-air updates during the month. And again, I'm not going to go into the detail of what those are because there's plenty of YouTube videos covering those. Suffice to say, it wasn't the American release of the full self-driving beta, but hey-ho. <laughs> So we're now on 2021.32.21 and that was downloaded and installed on the 24th of September while I was on the boat actually I did it remotely so uh, that's all good stuff. Uh, the Kona covered 417 miles in a month and now has a total mileage of 13,014. We actually took the Kona rather than the Tesla on holiday as it's I guess more conventional to operate perhaps it's only saving grace. Um, I didn't really want to go through the rigmarole of explaining how to use the Tesla key card, how to start the car, put it in gear, how to lock the car, and then set speed limit and valet mode via the app. Um, plus I would have received notifications on my phone every time they moved the car about. Um, so sort of where we hired the boat from in, um, in Norfolk, in Roxham, um, we chose undercover parking, which means you leave the keys with them as they often have to sort of shuffle the cars around as people return their boats or arrive to um, collect their boats. The reason for choosing undercover parking was I didn't want sort of any well-aimed seagull droppings sitting on the car's paintwork for two weeks because it will basically scorch the clear coat, leaving a blemish which is almost impossible to get rid of even with a, a DA rotary polisher. At least under cover, it only got dusty. Yeah, so that's it. Um, any questions, then dive down into the comments below and I'll pick those up. As always, please comment, like, share, and uh, all of those actions help get this video shown to more people on YouTube, which again helps my channel grow. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. All right, take care. Bye.